one of the things that we're often asked about, why do we use the label ex-Muslim? If we've left Islam, why, why does it matter? Why do we associate ourselves so directly? Um, and why do you just call yourself atheists? Like, you could just be an atheist. We get that a lot from like, not just Muslims, but actually non-Muslims as well. Yeah, exactly. So, um, what does the word ex-Muslim or the label ex-Muslim mean to you? For me, it comes from a place of, I was so alone. Like, I did not know you could leave Islam, right? And this is the experience for a lot of ex-Muslims. You don't even know what it means to leave Islam. So for a long time, I thought I was the only person out of 1.9 billion people who had left Islam. I didn't know that was even a concept. So I thought, am I one of the few people, who are the only person in the world, who doesn't think this is working for me? And that finding that identity was like, um, um, it was like experience, I can't explain it. It's like, you know, I, I can't explain it. It's like finding <laughs> something. The 21st century, imagining that you're the only one of yeah. anything, no matter what anything. it is. Yeah. It's, it's a little insane. You can't, sorry, that's it, yeah. I was like, I was, must have been insane. Because I was like, how could I leave something and be the only one? I, I must be crazy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So that's how true. No, it, it is a very common sentiment. We hear this all the time. I would say it's the most commonly expressed sentiment that I thought I was the only one. Um, of late, that's starting to change because we've been very active, we've been promoting it, and Muslims have started to notice it. And um, one of the funnier stories I have regarding that was, um, we were covered in a newspaper in Toronto, um, and uh, it was a Friday morning, and um, Muslims have Friday prayers that are group prayer and everybody gets together. And during the Friday afternoon prayers in Toronto, at one of the mosques, one of the imams was lashing out at us that this is a sign of end of times. This horrible thing is not only happening, but it's being covered in the newspapers. And we had, in the congregation, we had ex-Muslims that were in the closet that were attending the prayers because to their family, they were Muslim, they had no way out. And they were texting us, telling us, they're talking about you at the mosque. So to me, that's a huge improvement that um, they have, are forced to now acknowledge who we are. Um, going back to the uh, label of ex-Muslim, um, for me personally, I don't think it's a matter of identity. Um, it's more about uh, a political identity. It's a way to show solidarity. It's a way to show that we have left this religion because it's easier to dismiss. So if Richard Dawkins is speaking, he's somebody that is somewhat foreign. You don't, I, as a Muslim, I knew of Richard Dawkins. I knew of atheists in general, but I never gave them any weight, ever any credence because they were those people. They don't understand the truth there. Like, of the course, outsiders. Outsiders, but also within Islam, there's this concept that Christianity has been corrupted, Judaism has been corrupted. So it's easy to dismiss them that they were coming from a false tradition and they walked away from a false tradition. Of course, that makes perfect sense. But we have the truth, so of course, nobody's going to walk away from the truth. Um, so, sort of, ex Muslim draws a line in the sand that we are coming from this tradition and we are leaving this tradition explicitly. And um, I'm hopeful that down the road, it goes away entirely. Yeah. The ex-Muslim world sh word should not need to exist. I mean, I want, I want like the the next generation of ex-Muslims to be like, that's so weird. Why are you guys fighting about this? I don't care. I'm just like gonna play my Xbox. You know, like it's gonna be normalized. One thing I always say to people when they say, why are you saying ex-Muslim? They always say, oh, but I never hear about ex-Christians or ex-Jews, and that's because you haven't looked hard enough. <laughs> there are very large communities that do call themselves ex. Christian, especially in, you know, let's say in the US where you've yeah. got uh, strong evangelical Christian uh, groups and communities in the South especially, you will call yourself ex-Christian often. You won't just say, you know, you're a non-believer. Um, Ex-Mormons, you know, and I think it's a real travesty that this is one of the, way, the, the ways that people try to erase this by saying, well, why don't you erase yourself? Yeah. Why don't you just disappear? Don't use identity. So if you look at Scientology, for example, they don't want to talk about the fact that people are leaving. They want to hide it. They want to uh, prevent them from speaking out. Um, so it's sort of the same sort of control that nobody leaves. And what can we do to prevent people from leaving? And if they've actually left, what can, how can we bully them into not speaking out? Um, hopefully down the road, we get to a stage, maybe in the next, in the next century, where it, this, this, these sorts of labels aren't needed for anybody. Yeah. Be it Jehovah's Witness, Mormon, Muslim, whatever. We're all, enough of us have left that it's not an issue. Um, so one other point that I wanted to make regarding that was that it's also to show solidarity with people that are trapped in theocratic regimes that are suffering as a result of it. So if you look at every single Muslim country, people are routinely arrested. They are, um, people are routinely murdered for disbelieving, for voicing disbelief.